This is the plaintiff, Howard Siegel. He says he was hired by the defendant to clean offices of a school with an extensive dust problem from a recent construction project. The defendant agreed to reimburse him for the use of his van during the job. And now it's been three years and he hasn't been paid. He did great work, deserves to be paid, and that's why he's here, suing for the $3,000 he's owed. This is the defendant, Betty. She says she did indeed hire the plaintiff to clean up the school, but not for the use of his van. The guy has some nerve suing her in court because there were suspicions he was using the van to steal things from the school and transport them off the property. He took scrap metal, a motor, and the school eventually demanded he be removed from the premises. Oh, him! She thinks not. She's accused of not paying in full. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $5,000 for stolen property. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff was hired by the defendant to clean a school People's and didn't get paid. The but the defendant says she hired him, all right, but she has evidence he was up to no good. It's the case of getting school. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, okay, man. Howard Siegel? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you were suing Betty's company, cleaning company, that you worked for, but no longer work for for $3,000 for 34 days of you using your van to get to work plus gas. You are counterclaiming against him $5,000. You say you're out actually seven for various equipment and work that you lost and equipment you can't get to based on his actions. Okay, let me hear about your case against them first. Mr. Siegel, what is it that you did for the company? Um, I did uh, construction work and cleaning of a uh, school. In okay, Manhattan. what kind of construction work? Uh, boarding up emergency doors and then uh, cleaning and uh, maintaining the uh, construction area. Okay. How long did you work for the defendant's <clears throat> company? Oh, I would say about uh, a year, solid year, year and a half. All right. And then now tell me about this van use. Okay. Before we started the construction work on the doors, the replacement doors, Phil came up to me and said, look, Howard. Who's Phil? Okay, and what does Phil have to do with the company? Uh, Phil is an owner also. Okay, what's Phil to you? Uh, we're engaged and business we're partner. What? Engaged and Did business partner. Do you have a date? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> go ahead. Um, that he was getting $150 a day for a company van or a van to be on the premises to do the work. He said, if I would use my van, is willing to give me $75 so he can go and do other jobs with his van if I would use my van. And what did you use your van to do? I used my van to bring in cleaning materials that was in the other van, and I would take them out, put them into my van, and go into Manhattan to the school with them. In the beginning, when we were doing the construction on the doors, it was one, two, three, four, five. Because I see every day, right? No? Well, no, it's, it's really not every day. Okay, I'm having some difficulty. Perhaps you, who were so eager to interrupt, can help me out now, Phil. Yeah, okay. Um, did you I ever tell him that you would pay him $75 for driving his own van? Yes, when he did moving jobs, which he only did two moving jobs. He claims that he was constantly going to your house, picking up uh, cleaning supplies, and taking them into the city. It was really for when he did a moving job for that location. So like how many times did you office. pay him for a moving job? We paid him twice. Okay. And he worked for you for how long? Uh, a little over a year. Okay. So, uh, how often would you get paid? Not too often, they were always uh, lagging behind on pay. I'm sorry, you would get paid. How often would you get paid? Because uh, you didn't work for free for uh, how long? A year and a half? So, how often would you get paid? Every couple of months. Okay, how often would he get paid? It Between would... two and three weeks, he would get paid. Yeah, it wasn't a steady. Every two to three weeks he, he would get pay? He would get a paycheck, him? yes, he would get a paycheck. Okay, was there a timesheet involved? Yes. You would handwrite your timesheet? We uh, filled out a, uh, a requisite every time we were on the job site. Okay, so I presume that in that requisite, you would go ahead and fill out every time you used your van? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did he submit for the van and the requisites? Yes, yes or no? Yes, he did. Okay. But his van... Every time that he used the van to go to work? Well, he filled it out all the time, every time he went to work. He would put down that he brought his van in. Okay, and then he would put that down there. What, why do you think he was putting that down there, if not because he expected to get paid? 
I don't know why he was putting it down. He, it's not a company van, and the only the only van that was approved for the 150 was the company van, not an. And why wasn't he just driving the company van? He couldn't. He hit some. He hit somebody back in the 28. He rear-ended somebody a person. Somebody on 28. Yeah. Uh, wait, uh, in the company van? Yes. That's so what I did said. Did you have a car accident? Uh, an accident uh, in the company van? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody uh, made a quick turn to get into a parking lot. And I put my foot on the brake and she jumped in. Okay, and here's what I don't get. He's submitting requisitions that say van, and you, you have to know that that means he expects to get paid. And here's what I don't get from you. You're getting paid, but you're not getting paid for the van. And you continue to work there a year and a half. I, I don't get you guys. Doesn't anybody say anything about, hey, van, you forgot to pay me for the van last week? So let's just say, I mean, this is kind of interesting, not exactly part of the case. Let's say I hire you. Okay, and that I tell you, you need to drive my van to do a certain thing for my business, okay? You screw up, you get in an accident. Can I sue you for the damage to the van? I don't feel like you should because you're giving me permission to drive the car. Accidents happen. I mean, it's part of life. Uh, you, you guys buying that? You buying that? Yeah, I agree. You so I, you can't, I can't sue you for the damage. You should have insurance. That should cover it. Okay, what do you think? That's what insurance is for. That's why you have insurance. If I'm on the clock for you, then it's your responsibility. Oh, you guys are so wrong going inside the courtroom. Your Honor, I was always saying something about the van, especially when we first started off and we were doing all the replacement doors where I was going in and out of the city every day. What are the days, the 34 days are what days? Do you have that written out? Yes, I Let do. Let me see it. And what ended up happening that um, you no longer work for them? Um, that has to deal, I do believe, with their countersuit. You want to tell me or you want yes. me to just ask them? Oh, no. Okay. Um, we were doing a job in uh, Brooklyn at a school, and I was uh, waiting for a parking spot, and the people behind me were honking at me and yelling. I turned around and said, I'll just be a moment, and I'll be out of the way. They kept on honking. They were cursing at me. I wound up turning around and cursing at them. When that was over with, and I wound and took the spot that was open. When I got out of the spot, a school security guard came up to me and asked me why I was yelling at the, uh, the lady. And I said, I had no idea I was yelling at the lady. I was yelling at the people that were waiting to go, you know, up the block. And uh, there was just a misunderstanding with the, uh, with the What does that have to do with them and them firing you? Well, they said that I couldn't work for them any longer. Because who, who did that person end up being? That was the vice principal of the school. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? We, we got kicked off the job site. We weren't even allowed to go back in to get our equipment. And that's part of your counterclaim? Yes. Why would you not be allowed to go in to get your equipment? The teacher felt threatened. It doesn't and, matter. Yeah. Why wouldn't you be allowed to go in? That's ridiculous. If you have equipment there, yeah. you have the right to call the police, ask for a police escort, go in and get your equipment. Mm -hmm. Instead, what you're doing is you're counterclaiming against him $396 for four shot backs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I find that hard to believe. Well, well the contractor is the one who said that we couldn't go back to the building. Oh, because yeah. the contractor is the one that's hired that by hired the school. Us. Okay. Yes. And so the contractor fired you? Yes, he said he didn't want the employee or any of us in the building right now. Okay, so what happened to get you fired besides him cursing out the principal? Um, the first location uh, where he was doing the two moving jobs, I actually received an email from the contractor saying he was taking scrap metal and motors from the location and to please return everything. Motors? Yes. What kind of motors? Another, a, a motor to move like the shelving units around and everything. So they send you an email saying that he's taking that? What yes. proof yes. did they have? They had pictures, they had pictures. That's of why, him taking it? That's why yeah. he was using his van every day in the city. That's that's wait why a minute, of him van taking in. the stuff? Yes. Well, well, the pictures don't show him. They did show you ever talk to him about it? Yes. yes. And what happened? He, he said he's going to bring everything back. He said, did he? They said no. He said yes. What happened? Um, when we were up doing the doors, I noticed the motors. And I went down and spoke to the project officer. I said, is there any problem with me taking some motors? I thought everything was junk in the, uh, in the building. I was told there would be no problem by the contractor and by the project officer. So I took some motors. I wasn't hiding anything. I wasn't stealing them. I had permission. And uh, like a week later, I was told It's that the project manager that emailed you? Yes. All right. I the one you said gave you permission, emailed them, and I said, what given, the heck, you guys are thinking? I was given thief? permission. Well, that was because the security guard didn't know. The, the security guard, the uh, school security guard is the one who, I wasn't hiding anything, so let me take the motors out. Why would you think they're junk? Because the whole building was being uh, demoed. Was the whole building being no. demoed? 
Okay, go on. The whole building was being demoed, and there was stuff leaving the building every day. And when I found out that, uh, that there was a problem, I loaded them back up into the van, and I brought them back into the city with no problem. All right, so, so here's what we've got. We've got you um, getting paid for a year and a half, never getting paid for the van. Yes. And continuing to work. We've got you saying, oh, he wanted the van so he could steal stuff, and he wanted the van for his own reasons. Why would we pay the guy to get to work? But, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the heck your arrangement was. I'm disturbed that for a year and a half, you don't receive a penny and you don't say boo. You don't say I quit. You don't quit until you actually get fired. Actually, you don't quit. You get fired. You get fired because you curse out the vice principal. Um, not because you steal. Now, you want me to believe it's theft. Out and out theft, not like an, a, a misunderstanding. But you don't fire him when he's stealing. I Who are you people? And what planet do you all come from? I, I have some text messages here. You have text messages. Yeah. Let me see your text messages. Mm-hmm. Between you and who? Mm-hmm. Phil and myself. When did you stop working for them? I stopped working for them May or June of 2012. It gets more and more curious. You guys trying to string them along. Don't cash a check yet. Don't cash a check yet. What check? I haven't even gotten a check. <laughs> I'll let you know. You answer. Who's this answering? Phil? Or, or, Most or, of the time it's Phil, yes. I'll let you know when I pick up my check which check you can deposit about noon. How long is this going to take? Not long, about a week. Hmm. Never get the story straight. Then for some reason you ask again, can I deposit the checks? Oh, I'll let you know by Friday. <laughs> you can deposit one check on Monday, the next one by Thursday. You can deposit next check next Tuesday. I'll call you on Wednesday. We're going out of business. And then you ask, and this is why you showed it to me. Okay, what about the, vi- the van money? Yeah, no problem. Okay, thanks. Why do you say, yeah, no problem? Because I don't even know what he's talking about at this point. Well, why don't you say, I don't know what you're talking about? When I called him, I I asked him. So all the time that I had to bring in the van, you got all the money, my van, my gas, question mark, question mark. So I guess I'll see you in court. I'll have plenty of witnesses to tell the judge of your business practices. Do you have any witnesses to call? Um. (laughs) I think she answers, or he answers, I didn't get paid because you stole from one job and you attacked a teacher on the other job. That's a little poetic license. Let's not forget the Rolex you took from the house job. What's that about? Embarrassing. Oh, uh, we were doing some private work also. And two people went to the room, Mr. Siegel and his, and his uh, what was his name? His friend. I his friend remember. went into a room, and later on in the day, they noticed that a watch was missing. And what? Did he get arrested for it? Was he seen taking a Rolex? No, what because, are you saying? No, because he said his friend took it. Did you Your ever Honor, tell him your friend I took it? I never said that. Never. Oh, he said that wasn't his M.O. Oh, what he said. gosh. Who would hire you people to come into their home? Okay. You have a, a lawsuit against him for the shop facts we talked about. Almost $7,000 for lost work for four attic cleanups. Yeah, we still mm-hmm. have four more attics to do in that school. What, isn't that your own fault? Like, why would that be his fault? And your counterclaim against him, zero. As for the use of the van, they admit they don't pay you regularly. Yeah, it took a while, it took a while, it took a while. And then he admits, yeah, I told him, I, but it was only twice. And yet I see him on text saying, yeah, no problem, pay you for the van. I don't know which of you guys to believe. So this is the part of my job where I do what, Douglas? You're doing a little rough justice That's here. That's right, man. <laughs> That's right. I am ordering the defendants to pay the plaintiff $1,200. That's my judgment. So the plaintiff does recover not everything he sued for. What's your, what's your reaction to what he got out of this? It's just BS. It's not true. I mean, we paid him gas money for the moving jobs, and that was... What kind of loosey-goosey uh, way is this to do business? Shouldn't you guys tighten up your... We have, we have. Yeah. Yeah. We no longer do. We no longer. We only do private work now. It takes too long to get paid from the city, and we end up with employees like him. All right, head head right down there, okay? Thank you. All right, so come on in here and satisfied with what you come out with here. I thought that uh, the judge saw my side of it. I. I put down every time I use my van for these people. They always have a story. They're always making up stuff, and it was actually quite embarrassing. And um, I wound up getting the short end of the stick on this right. one. Well, did maybe you learned a lesson of some kind? Of yeah, I definitely learned a lesson, yeah. 
Um, pay me after my work is done. If not, have a nice day. No pay, no work. That's right. Harvey? You know, the judge always talks about this thing with rough justice. The fact is, in most courts where you have, like, a, it's called a court of general jurisdiction where people sue for a lot of money, you can't do rough justice. In small claims, they kind of slide, but that's it.